So thanks very much, everyone, for uh, sticking around till the uh, the end of this conference. And uh, we've got two really nice presentations coming up um, in the next hour. First, it's going to be Matthew and Charlotte, and then we've got Stephen. Uh, they're going to be 30 minutes uh, each. If any of you have questions, please just put your hand up and I'll try and get to you so that we've got uh, the audio for the online uh, people. OK, but uh, over to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, so, yeah, so I'm Charlotte. Um, and I'm starting off and then I'll pass over to Max so there'll be a bit of interchanging of mics and stuff as we go through. Um, but yeah, we're looking at kind of the adapting video production to enhance um, user engagement. So with what we're looking at is um, our users are staff rather than students, but it can be implemented across the students, obviously, as well. Right, if you just want to move on to the first one. So we create a mandatory staff course every year. So for the past three years, we've been doing a staff course that they have to um, complete um, every year before teaching starts. So it happens kind of during the summer. We're just coming to the end of this year's uh, mandatory session. Um, and um, within that, we put videos, we have content, how they're supposed to be um, using the VLE, how they could be using the different tools for teaching and all the different elements that they could be using for that year and any updates. Um, the current 2023 course has been live for two months. Um, it runs for about that length to two and a half months for them to complete it for that summer period. Um, and last year, um, obviously we're coming just towards the end. So last year it was 650 plus students, which are academics um, within that course. Um, they're mainly using desktops and laptops rather than a mobile device. So just thinking about the differences of maybe students might be more uh, mobile device kind of element. Um, and what we did was last year, uh, as we were creating this course, we looked at last year's um, course content, the video content that we were using and analysed that content, basically. So had a look at the user engagement, um, where the kind of dropouts were. Um, and different kind of elements of where it was placed within the course and what people were looking at. So from that, um, for this year's content, when we were creating at the beginning of the year, uh, we created that kind of data-driven content plan. So what worked, so what seemed to work, what people were looking at, and maybe how we could change it to experiment a bit with um, that content. Um, so Matt's going to have a look at some of that data from last year's as well as from this year's and how we kind of compared between the two and what we've kind of done. And I'm going to swap this over for you. Yeah, we'll do a little more change. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's giving you a bit of context anyway. So just to give you a bit of an idea on how we approach this, um, the main thing I want you to get from this presentation is just the process. We don't necessarily hold all the answers either. It's just the idea of analyzing the data, looking at the parts in the video where the dropout happened and just trying to come up with a conclusion. So just to give you, a, you've got two points on the graph. Obviously, we can see a little bit of a, a dropout there. Those are the bits I'm interested in. There is a general dropout you're always going to get between um, the start and the end, but that's not really good for me at all. There could be internet dropout. There could be someone's knocking at the door for a parcel. There could be children next door setting the house on fire i don't know it's one of those things it's just during the summer there's loads of different reasons where that dropout could occur but those ones are the most interesting points just there so i would calculate percentages based on that as well so I look at the starting point point a uh how many viewers actually got to that point and then on point b look at the differential between those two numbers and i think on this example it was about a 20 percent dropout so it's just looking at those and seeing anything significant and looking at and trying to figure out why, which inevitably meant that I had to look at video, like a 10 second part of the video over and over and over again and try to figure out what was going on. Um, just worth noting, the average completion rate is actually, it doesn't help me at all. Um, because if you actually total up the average completion rate and you think it like finishes around here, there's no dropout. I can't do anything with that data. It's, it's a misleading stat. So trends and phenomenons. Um, again, this is like one of the hardest ones to, it, when I was doing it and when I've written up the reports on this, again, I, I've, I've done like a 
4,000 word report on this. If anyone is really into data and stuff, by all means, let me know and I'll send it to you. But I kind of felt like I was like tin hat theory at the end of it. Like, am I going insane? Am I seeing this thing? It's repeating over and over again. And one of the things that I keep finding was every 25 to 30 seconds, there was almost like an attention hurdle. Um, and it happened across all the videos within the two years. It was like, and I try to look at stats and statistics around, okay, well, do people's attention have a certain point and then they drop out? And there's some people saying 47 seconds, some people saying uh, 30 something, but essentially what I've come to a conclusion of is that's a repeating number. So you might get them past the first X amount of time, but then you have to get them past the next hurdle and then the next hurdle. It's multiple times that's gonna happen over a video. So you can kind of see that in this example here. Very, very slight. Obviously, I've got a bigger version that you can do. Um, in this version, I think yeah, it was, that was about 6%, 5% and somewhere around there. Like it was relatively quite low. That was like a relatively good video. This one, you can see something a bit more substantial. Um, and I kind of went into this as well with pre-conceived ideas that, okay, shorter content is going to do better than longer form content because of the attention span X, Y, and Z, everything that told me about the attention um, economy and everything like that. But ultimately, it, some of the shorter videos actually had stronger dropouts than the longer ones. So it's it's literally down to delivery. It's down to content. There's a load of um, nuances there that's going on that I have to kind of uncover and try to figure out. Um, so that's kind of the pre-context, but the why, this is the bit where I'm going to go into this and basically say, this is my preconceived ideas on what I think might have happened. Now, in these examples that I'm going to show you, I made all of the videos, um, edited them all, kind of packaged them all together. I've got reasons why um, that I think they've caused a the dropout. But again, I'm happy to share this content after the fact, and then you can watch them and then you can figure out what you think happened here. So one of the videos that we do every year um, is essentially our Keith McClay here. He basically introduces the course and basically says, look, welcome to the course. Um, we're going to get a lot out of this. It's normally just like a prerequisite to a bit of context, right? So we do those every year. The first video was just a single camera just on him. Second year, I did two cameras cut between just two angles. And this year, I jazzed it up and put some cutaways in. So as you can see what they look like here. This is the cutaways. Now, this is the viewing statistics of it. We've got a semi-repeating pattern. It doesn't happen too much here. And the reason why on this 20 to 30 second point here, there's not like a very visible dropout. I tend to find the first video in a course tends to have the most amount of views because people are all enthusiastic about the course at this point. And then normally here, they hate the content from this point onwards. It's a bit more of a task. So it happened a little dropout there, but that one is more substantial. At that point, it's these clips here. Now, generally how I tackle film production, especially with creating a cutaway package, video, just a uh, context. I do a lot of video work. That's my background, creating a lot of content, shooting and filming. Um, I would normally film like a wide shot, a mid shot and then reverse that and then get like a, a bit more of a, a, seeing a bit more action in the scene. And you'd put that together within 10 to 15 seconds and it just keeps the viewer just a bit more engaged and giving a bit more context. Now, during that point there is a repeat of shots. It's the same scene. I've actually shown the scene earlier on, but essentially I was scraping the barrel of cutaways at this point. I, was, I should have really filmed a new scene. It was just... You know, we I had like 12 videos to edit by a certain amount of time. I didn't necessarily have time to go and reshoot a new scene, but to stop that dropout, I kind of come to the conclusion where I should have just, I should have gone out and filmed a new scene, essentially. It was just as basic as that. The cutaway package was terrible. It was boring. All the shots kind of looked similar and the same. And yeah, it was boring. It was visually not great. So that's kind of some of the reasons. Um, that's a video that we kind of do year on, year out, and I'm gonna learn from that. And next year, I'm gonna make sure at those intervals, at those 20 to 30 second intervals, that something, there's not a, an excuse for people to drop out. I'm always gonna get dropout rates as well. It's, I think you're always gonna get some people at those interval hurdles that will have a reason to drop out. But if I can minimize that, 
drop out as best I can. That's what I'm going to try and do. Um, one of the things that we did this year that we didn't do last year is we did, um, this is a one minute video. Hopefully we'll play it for you in a second if it works. Um, and it's a concept video with one core message. Now this sits within the course just on about organizing your Blackboard folder. It's a simple message. That's all it is. Like just make it, just organize your Blackboard folder and it'll be better for everyone. That's just the core message. And we did it in a metaphor of label list tins and the student here, he takes out a tin of mushy peas instead of beans. And that's kind of the core concept. It's very daft, simple idea. Um, let me see if I can play the video. I want you to try and guess where the dropout is. Hopefully, does this work? Okay, let's just pretend that we know what it's playing. <laughs> I was hoping to try and click on this, but it doesn't seem to be doing it. Is it right if you can try just while I waffle on for a few more moments? Um, yeah, so obviously the way we tackled this and where this sits in the course, the content's completely different. The other stuff is more like documentary where this feels a bit more commercially fictional. It's playful. It's playful. We've got a bit of music underneath. You can see the shots that we're messing around with there. We're, you know, obviously we're cutting logic out um, of the process and it was just something relatively quite easy to play around with. And if you scroll down, hopefully, oh, now everyone can see my terribly written notes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody read it. <laughs> Let's just blur it as much as we can. Uh, take the play out. Now, I did make this unlisted just before. Hopefully. Yeah, okay, great. Now, I just hope there's audio. Yeah. Well, let's see. In our kitchens, we organise things to make them easier to find. You might organise your cans with other similar items and benefit from the clear labels which help you find that can of spaghetti you need. However, imagine if you were just staring at a sea of unlabeled cans. How would you find the one that you were looking for? Well, for many students, searching for the right resource within a module can feel just like that. It can be confusing, time consuming and just downright frustrating. But there are things that make the search so much easier. For example, when resources are organized into clear categories, such as by week and topic or assignment. If resources are organized clearly, your students will be able to find what they need quickly and easily. No more hunting for that can of spaghetti in a sea of unlabeled cans. Just kind of noting now, I was trying to avoid the cliche of students with tin of beans on whatever on toast, but yeah, you know. Anyway, um, yeah, so we did this, uh, and I'm going to, well, where would you just think, where would you drop out at that point, right? And then I'm going to. Maybe first can we then reach Okay, first can. Yes. You're... Okay. Now, you're close. You're close. So basically, at that point there, that's within the 20... 25 to 30 second mark, there's the steep drop here. Now we've come to the conclusion that essentially by this point, the video has done its job. It's like people know, okay, great. I've got the concept. I don't need to watch it anymore. And essentially this part of the video is just hammering that fact home, you know, just, just a little bit further. Now, if I was to do this video again, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't. Because if I made a change here and made a 30 second version, yeah, I might get people watching towards the end, but there's still a considerable amount of people watching to the end. So those people there still might have just a little bit extra that visualization to remember those key points. So it was an interesting one. We analyzed it over and over again. And yeah, it was about that tin. Um, it was the tin pouring in the first tin pouring in that kind of was there. And basically that's what the, the conclusion we came to. We just analyzed that point over and over again. Um, Matthew, can I just say congratulations to Rachel online? She actually said after the peas. So, uh, oh, great. <laughs> well done, yeah. Rachel. Again, and it's just like you start thinking about it in that way. You start analyzing content in the in the audience perspective and information up to that point and where, you know, because again, it's very important to think about that whole attention economy and like 
the way I think about it is let's say you've got a student going on a course or online course and they've only got 10 tokens worth of information to absorb that period of time and what tokens are they going to dish out or what are you going to what are they going to spend them on essentially so yeah it, this video did work surprisingly very well even though we had a near 21 percent dropout but again I'm, I'm happy with that that's fine uh okay so this one was really interesting so this one last year we had we saw this phenomenon where we looked at all the content and any time this is going to sound like a negative point and then i'm going to bring it back to the fact that it's not negative it was a really hard one to articulate this because the phenomenon we saw was every time any of our academics in the video content last year mentioned our students there was a dropout now immediately think is that a bad thing like they're watching as soon as our oh, students are mentioned i'm not gonna watch anymore right that was the initial preconceived idea that i potentially had at that time and I was like, hang on, is this like a really bad thing that I've just found here? Like that, that's the that's the thing that's coming coming around. But what we actually found was we kind of merged that theory to what if it's what if it's presumed knowledge? What if every time we mention our students that they already know what those academics and those then that content's going to be talking about? What if what if that's it? But then it finally evolved the theory to, and again. I can only stress this enough. This is going to be an ongoing process. I might never have the exact answer. It might change every year. But these videos, we decided to get the student voice in the content. So rather than academics um, around the university talking about different things that they're doing with their students, what if we get the students in it, get their voice in it? And they work surprisingly well. They actually had some of the best views and with very, very minimal dropouts. Again, around the 25 to 30 second mark. And they have a range of different, re well, range of different reasons why I think might have had the dropouts towards this one, towards the end, uh, is where the person feels like they're wrapping up. They're saying like, it's, it feels like they're wrapping up a point. And that's what I tend to find a lot of the dropouts happen towards the end. If, if the presenter in the video is kind of saying like, and thank you for watching or whatever. If it feels like it's going down those longer lines, you're going to get dropouts. Another reason is uh, more of a technical one. If, as soon as you have an end frame that's longer than five seconds, people are just going to drop out. As soon as they see that logo come up, it's like, nope, don't need to watch it. It's, it's just, that's it. So we've analyzed a lot of points around there, really. And yeah, it was just an interesting one. We, we The point started out, maybe it's a very negative thing against our academics, but it actually turned out to be, they just wanted to hear or our, our idea is that they actually wanted to hear from, I don't really necessarily think this is an appropriate saying, but from the horse's mouth in this in this case, but hopefully that kind of summarizes that a bit more. Putting the student's voice in it rather than academics talking about the students. And basically, I think in terms of where we're going forward, um, we're going to look at all this content and analyze it further. And it's just going to be an ongoing process where we try come up to a conclusion we try figure out tweak a few things here and there um but these are the things that i'm basically going to talk about now so i know we saw the keynote said don't put bullet points on the slide and i'm really sorry i've done that um yeah this is kind of the process that we kind of went with um we designed the content to start out with, and this was year one. We just kind of went into it, filmed a lot of stuff, chucked it out there and hoped for the best. Um, so we created it, deployed it. Um, we didn't actually do a review until the second year. Like I didn't even think to look at the analytics and look at how people were engaging with this content. It was like a task given to me to make the content and just chuck it and hope it sticks. And it was only after the second, the second year where we actually started seeing these trends and i if you are in a position where you look at video content analytics or anything like that and you can start seeing these very visible dropouts i would try analyze as much as you can to try figure out why those dropouts are occurring at least to keep yourself just a bit informed in terms of the execution of the video production i suppose um so yeah we did a review second year and then we made some changes but again this is an ongoing thing uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing um, next year, approach it completely different. 
Um, one of the things that I tried to do last year was to try and keep consistency with content, right? To try and make them all feel part of the same package. Like it's all part of the same brand or part of the, all the commercial side of me that would probably a brand would want. But that's a bad thing. Like viewers start anticipating what that content's going to feel like. It's like you want to surprise them. Do one that feels like a documentary. Do one that feels like more like a metaphor. Do one that just feels like, I don't know, the ones that we do with box pops with students and stuff where it's just candid grabbing some stuff if you keep the viewer constantly not anticipating what that content's going to feel like that will also increase engagement it's it's just if they anticipate what's happening it will drop off and um, what we also found is pace so how they present um we've got some excellent academics within this one video and it was them talking about this new uh, developer Derby site that was just going to be a resource that they can use with their students. Now, in all honesty, I didn't think this content was going to go down that well. It was the way I filmed it was interviews, two cameras. Um, the second camera angle was handheld, so they had a bit of pace to it as well. But their general passion for what they were talking about and how they applied those pedagogical practices into their learning and teaching was the thing that was contagious while watching it. It was like, it just kept you going. It just, it didn't feel like it was necessarily a bad thing to watch. That's all I did, just two camera angles and cut it through. I thought I was, I thought I was gonna have major dropouts in that video. And it was one of the longest pieces of content we did. It was like two minutes, 20. And then the other one was like almost three minutes and it had the biggest engagement. And it was just a really simple thing. I thought I'd had to chuck in loads of cutaways I don't know, animation halfway through, dragonfly, and I don't know, something something exciting visually. But this was the, this was, it was just a, a thing I couldn't really, I didn't really plan for. Sorry, Matthew, can you just repeat the question? So how was I, the approach to that one, what surprised me? Okay, so I, I think the previous year, I shot a load of interviews and that was it. The most exciting thing about it was maybe a couple of times to put audio underneath, cut between the two camera angles and that's it. It was relatively visually quite dry. And that's the thing that surprised me. It was the thing that kept them going was their passion for it. And they're just, anim they, they were so animated, you know, they were just genuinely passionate about what they were talking about. So yeah. Uh, how they present is a big factor. And I think that's with all content as well. Just imagine, it could be the most interesting subject in the world, but if you have somebody very dry, stiff, it's gonna, yeah, it's with anything. I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to what the keynote was saying this morning about how they present in front of people as well. You, there's a way that you can get people to switch off. Um, yes, okay, this one's an interesting one. I might not get through all of these, apologies, but I'll uh, I'll try try rattle them off as quickly as I can. Time for a single call to action message. So it's very similar to that metaphor video that I made that was, I know it was one minute of there saying 30 seconds tops, but I will make rules and break them all the time, just to let you know. Um, it's one of those ones where within those 30 seconds, that one point is probably enough cognitively to process um, if you overload it too much, that can be a point where people drop out as well. We did videos where um, it would be somebody talking about something that's coming to the new Blackboard or whatever, and their applications of it. And then I'll cut to a screen uh, sharing thing of showing them doing it through Blackboard. And the video up until that point, the pace felt more documentary feel. There was cutaways or whatever. And then eventually you just get to this kind of stagnant i didn't really do anything else than just a screen recording and then that was at a cross point of the attention hurdle 25 to 30 second it was a killer it was just plummeted the video so i think the main thing is with our students in, in this case our phenomenon is between 25 to 30 seconds that might be a completely different environment for for you you that you might see something completely different but again i'm not trying to get across the the rule of 25 to 30 seconds is gospel it's just the approach that we take uh just checking on time so five minutes five minutes great um so context is a very good point in this if i think if we just randomly surprise them with the video on 
the organizing your Blackboard content, I think we would have had a less of a dropout rate, but because the context of where we put that video was on organizing your Blackboard and they've already read some of this content anyway, they were almost geared up to the fact that this video is kind of going to be around that point as well. So, but then it goes down to a design point of view. You don't really want to chuck a random video about different content in somewhere else. <laughs> it's kind of weighing up that balance. Um, I think the main kind of point I want to go across, and then I've got a little bit of time for questions, is you can make changes. You can think about some of the decision making that you can make with cutaways and at those points that you're going to put them in the video, but ultimately you don't want to make a change that then alienates the previous people that watch to the end. Because ultimately then you're just making a change and there's just a new group of people that are going to drop out and then that makes sense. Hopefully I've articulated that in the best way possible. Um, so yeah, some of the changes we can we can make and some of them I would keep the same, even if we are just going to, you're going to get dropouts. It, it, no one's, no one's going to make a perfect video, I don't think. Um, unless you do, please let me know and then I'll steal the secrets. Uh, but yes, that's that kind of, hopefully I've kind of answered all the questions. Charlotte, have you got anything else that you want to add just before? And then we'll leave a couple of minutes for questions. So Charlotte's just responding to a couple of questions we got online, which is great. Okay, um, perfect. Anybody else got any questions for Matthew and Charlotte? Yes. Oh, sorry, can we just... Yeah. Something to do. Thanks a lot. Well, firstly, thank you. Thanks for being so honest. That was really, really useful. Um, and can I get your report, please? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, it will go through all of the content specifically, and I'll break down yeah. in the report where the dropouts happen, the percentage of the dropouts, and what I think and believe each dropout is the reason for. So, yeah, it's a bit more in depth and. Yeah, there's a summary at the top, actually. You just need to read that bit. That's fine. No, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the dropouts then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah, again, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting. I want to rewind all the way to the top because one of the things that I find very frustrating is, you know, you create something and then you can't send people there. All this nice content in your case, people yeah. saw it. In my case, I think people wouldn't really necessarily see it at all. Yeah. Um, is that how did you, in essence, get the buy in to be able to design something that is two, three months long and, you know, stuff actually go there? Yeah. So, I mean, this is where we're incredibly fortunate, right? So let's just take. I'll get to your question, but let's just take a normal uh, lecture experience and maybe you've got at best 100 students or, or plus, depending on what institution you have, and you drop some content in a module and you say, look, can you watch this by the end of next week? You're not going to get a consistent approach of viewership. It's just one of those things where at best you might, the, the data won't be accurate, I don't think, and people will watch that in a very different way, whereas we were in a very fortunate approach of this is semi-policy driven that they have to kind of watch this content um, and basically upskill themselves um, around every year new things coming x y and z and because of that we have a lot of st students academics going through this process and watching our content so it made the trends very clear and it was just a, a really nice um, yeah it's policy driven given us the data we need. And then I can actually make those decisions as well. Because another thing you can't do is maybe within a lecture, you play a piece of video in front of a load of students. You don't necessarily know when they're dropping out mentally. Like that's a hard, it's a hard thing to kind of get. So very, very fortunate position to kind of use this data in a way to for creative decision-making. So yeah, policy, sorry. I, I think I've answered the question. Cool. Okay, we're sort of out of time, I think, unless there's a burning final question from anybody. Mm. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed, no Matt, Matthew, and Charlotte. Thank you.